You know, so it seems like Sharon Morris making some moves already to uh, to help shore up uh, recruiting in this new era of NIL, uh, more use of transfer portal, um, you know, that's going on. So, um, you know, what's your take on what he's doing to to build things up? Yeah, so I'm I'm this, I'm very optimistic here. Um, you know, Sean McGee is a donor guy. Uh, he has a lot of connections. He was here previously, so he knows a lot of people. He's kind of, he's not, he is a general manager, right? But he's kind of an NIL director um, because he's going to be the guy who makes sure the collectives have uh, the networking and the connections and the, and the fundraising going on and make sure the donors have somebody they can go to, a point man. So, right. you know, also they they made the uh, the announcement of, of Learfield and Atlas mm -hmm. joining uh, you know, Michigan, they're going to have an office in the uh, at Schimbecker Hall, I believe. And they're going to be giving players legal uh, NIL opportunities. But also, I think you could see some gray area with that. Yep. But, um, you know, I think you're seeing structures uh, and foundations put in place, which should uh, bear fruit in the future. And then when you look at what they're trying to build underneath Sean McGee, right? So, Right now, so I used to have an Excel sheet with the entire recruiting, uh, recruiting department, and it was about 10 people uh, underneath it. Looking at the new structure with a general manager, a director of player personnel, an assistant director of player personnel, who's Denard Robinson, by the way, uh, the director of recruiting, who's Albert Karshina, the assistant director, who's Sam Popper. They're going to also add um, a director of recruiting assistant for offense, and they're going to add one for defense. So this way they can focus on those two, you know, their own side respectively. respectively. And then you still have uh, Christina uh, DeRuder, who is the director of on-campus recruiting. And then what they're going to do, and this is very uh, innovative. I don't know if it's innovative, but it's very savvy of Sharon to do this because there might be other schools doing this. They're going to hire 10 mm -hmm. interns to shadow each coach and, and do all the, you know, all the small work. So this way the coaches can focus on other things that matter, but make sure they got like all the players' names, make sure they figure out who's in the family, you know. Uh, Smart. And, you know, I, I think that's taken the, the, the step in the right direction because Harbaugh was very uh, conservative with the recruiting uh, strategy, I would say. So with with uh, with Sharon Moore building this department, laying the foundation down, I think we should see some benefit. The only question I have left is, what are we going to do? Are we going to start offering some financial benefit to some of these players? We're going to see. I'm I'm hoping to see that this year, but if we don't, uh, you know, I just hope for the best. You know, I don't know. Hopefully, better than yeah. top, better than like 17th ranked recruiting classes. Yeah, it, it's um, it'll really depend if you don't hear a lot of people leaving. So you 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 don't hear anything about Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant, some of the people that other schools have been kind of going after with big NIL money. Then at the very least, we probably shored up the NIL for current you know players that have proven it on the field. Which got to do that. Can't can't not do that any like there's no excuse for that yeah. right um but i do think if you start hearing on 247 that michigan's you know really seriously in play for for more five stars um you know and you start to hear about now it's not going to be every five star because some five stars aren't the michigan player where you know they're they're you know it's got to be team first people even if they're mm -hmm. five stars you know they've got to be part of that culture um, you know, so I don't think that's ever, that's going to go away under Sharon Moore, but, um, but if you start hearing about maybe one or two more, uh, maybe, um, either top defensive players, at least, at least players in the mold of what Michigan does, I'd be very shocked to hear about a lot of five-star wide receivers right now, but, but like a little bit more on the line, a little bit more on the, if you start hearing about the next level up. Um, then there might be some some NIL starting to go to uh, starting to go to recruits. Well, it has been reported that Sharon Moore is willing to broaden the scope of recruits that they're willing to uh, recruit versus what Harbaugh was willing to recruit. So that would be interesting to see. Um, you know, with the donor that we were going to be talking yes. about, yes, we have a donor, an anonymous donor, 
Uh, yes. Shout out to him. We appreciate you. Uh, you know, donating multiple millions. Uh, we don't know the exact figure, but apparently it's, you know, it's a good number. Uh, so they were already at 7 million. So with his, with his donation, they got to be in the, shoot, I don't know, uh, what, the eight figures now? 10, 11? Yeah, so the eight figures. And, uh, you know, their goal was 12. So uh, I'm pretty sure they're close to it. I'm hoping to see maybe a team-based salary announced. I, I haven't heard any rumors. Like, I've heard the rumors that they want to do it, but I haven't heard any rumors that it's happening anytime soon. But, uh, you know, I think that'll go a long way. And, and you know, it's not even just the five stars, though, right? We got to get the top right. 100 players. We got to get right. we got to get more top 100 players because – our sweet spot seems to be 150 to 400 or 500, right? That's kind of where we're getting our, that's kind of our net right now. We need to expand that net into the top hundred, uh, you know, top 50 guys, you know, and like, I think the best strategy I heard and uh, you know, I'll credit Chris Ballas to this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you can just build your foundation with cornerstone players, like five to six of them, every class, and then you have a team-based salary for the rest of the class. You know, we should be able to get recruiting classes in the top 10, you know, in that 8 to 12 range. And that should be good enough to be competitive in the college football playoff, especially with all the parity now. Yeah, for sure. Um, yes, thank you to uh, the anonymous seven-figure donor. We don't know if it was Uncle T or someone else. I still think it might be Tom Brady who was Uncle T. I don't know. I did Just a theory. Just a theory. We don't know. We don't know who it was, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, whoever it was, uh, that's great. And it, it's, it, it shows that, um, you know, I think a lot more donors would step up if someone like, I don't know, the NCAA president came out and said, you know what, um, you know, it's time, let's, let's go ahead and, uh, and just make it official. Everyone can have a salary every, like, Let's let's just embrace this because it's happening anyway, and let's at least be fair about it. And then I think yeah. you would see more seven-figure donors uh, start to pony up because we have them. I mean, Michigan sure. alumni base is rich, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not everybody, you know, but you know, there's quite a few business owners, um, people who have the funds to really help Champion Circle out and uh, and some of these initiatives. Yeah, I think like, so for example, Champion Circle, they just hired a full-time fundraiser guy, right? So, I mean, he was just hired within the last three weeks. So, I mean, I, I think you're going to see more comfort in that area. I think there was a lot of discomfort, uh, you know, amongst the Michigan uh, whales, we, you know, we'll say. So, I think, you know, with San, with uh, uh, Sean McGee and then Sharon Moore making these uh you know, these, these connections, this networking, I think we're going to see more comfort, more donors step forward. Um, you know, there's this, there's a stigma where like, Oh, well, Michigan alumni don't care about sports as much as other programs. I don't, I don't believe that. I think there's just um, a philosophy that was in place for a long time that needs to be adjusted or evolved. And I think if people see, you know, I'll tell you this, if we start losing, shit's going to change. I'll tell you that right now. You know, because of our success, I think we have a little bit of uh, fat and laziness with our, our approach to uh, pay for work, not pay for play. And uh, and, I'll, and I'll credit Brian Cook for that because that was he's the first one I heard say that. And I agree with it. Um, I think, it, you know, if we take a hard loss to a, a certain team, I won't name. Mm -hmm. and, uh, or if we don't have the year that we we were expecting, you know, and I know it's Strong's first year, so we're not expecting, you know, 12 and 0. But. If we have a hard year, I, I, I'll tell you right now, we will evolve. You will evolve when you start losing. But hopefully we don't have to get there. We can we can evolve before that happens. And, uh, you know, I just think we're going to see this summer uh, changes. And I'm hoping to see, you know, some, you know, like like we talked about, some top 100 players uh, committing. Because yep. that will be the tell. Um, that will be the tell right there. That it would. And yeah, so uh, stay tuned. Um, yeah, Sean McGee, some of his responsibilities uh, include, it looks like oversee the recruiting budget each fiscal year. Well, that's kind of a big one. Um, execute short and long-term goals uh, as it relates to the vision of Michigan's NIL activities. Um, there's a lot of NIL references in, in these write-ups that I'm, I'm seeing here. Um, so yeah, he's going to, he's going to have some NIL, uh, 
responsibilities as almost like the the chief of nil so to speak um with as you mentioned the people that'll be underneath him uh yeah. the new partnership so yeah let's let's see what uh what um what what we can shake out what what uh what we start to see on the recruiting trail for 2025 okay uh before we get to uh quarterbacks um you know just a quick reminder that we do have a merch store um, so we have quite a few, just incredible, tremendous products for the entire family, uh, friends, neighbors, um, any Michigan fan uh, out there. You've got everything from gift cards to pint glasses. You got a hoodie. Uh, Mike Fort, uh, our friend friend of the program, Mike Fort, likes to show off his hoodie um, when he calls in. Uh, yeah, you got mugs. You got pet bowls. Uh, so we got some uh, some Voice of College Football Michigan merch, as well as uh, many other uh, schools represented in here um, and other channels that you may uh, know and love. So get yourself some merch if you haven't already. Uh, highly recommend that. Uh, and I'm sure Moose will help us out by, uh, by putting the link in at some point, or he probably already did. Uh, so we thank you. There it is. See? We appreciate that, Moose. We do. All right. Um, so, yes, I was wrong. I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. I did not think that they were going to approve Jack Tuttle's seventh year because Talia didn't get a seventh year. I know it wasn't mm. exactly apples to oranges, but Talia had Nick Saban advocating for him, and he didn't yeah. get it. But I guess... Hey, Jack Tuttle got it, um, which means he's going to be in the quarterback conversation. Um, and and it's, uh, the, do you see it as a four way battle? Because at this point, you've got Jack Tuttle, yeah. Alex Orgy, Jaden yeah. Denigal, and Jaden Davis. Uh, apparently, you know, because he he put in that time in December and January, yeah, um, isn't completely out of the running. I don't think. Uh, so so what? Where do you see the the quarterback battle now that Jack Tuttle's coming back? Yeah, I mean, I guess we could say it's a four-way battle. I just don't see Jaden Davis as a true freshman getting the run. I just, I don't know. I don't see Sharon yeah. trusting a true freshman quarterback his first year. I just can't see it. Unless he kills it. He would have to kill it yeah, in spring to, and to, in fall and in everything. I mean, he's got to be on like a Trevor Lawrence level play to right. earn that. Because even Trevor Lawrence didn't start game one right. for Clemson. That's how, you know, that's how hard it is to do. Jamison Winston did. It's very rare. Um I think it's a, I think it is a Jack Tuttle at the moment, a Jack Tuttle, Jaden Denigal, David Orgy battle. Um, I think Jack Tuttle is your high floor. And I don't even know if I want to say high floor. That's your floor. Um, I mean, I'm glad to have him though. You know, it's, it, it doesn't hurt to have him in the room. I, you know, David Orgy, David Orgy is your high ceiling, but I will be honest personally, I'm not optimistic. He'll get his accuracy issues handled, but if he does, he does. And maybe I'm wrong and I want to be wrong. I really hope he, you know, he gets, he, he kills it this spring, but I do think our solution is not on the team. That's where I am huh. with it. Um, I think we're going to be portal shopping after spring okay. ball. We'll see though. We'll see. I want to be wrong though. I want Orgy to be yeah. the man because he's a, he's a freaking beast. Dude. I think, I think Orgy's kind of a cult favorite uh, for yeah. sure. Um, we did hear uh, Moose has been very high on Jaden Denigal and uh, Kirk Campbell even made a, a comment that uh, Denigal is, is the most improved player mm. um, or one of the most improved players. Uh, so I, I mean, I, I hope it works out with Orgy. I really do. Cause I could see, I could see a really interesting offense with him under under center. Um, the additional RPOs that you could do, the additional read option, you could start to do more zone read because um, you know you know that he can run the ball like the best of them. Or or I don't know, hand off to Donovan Edwards who can who can also run the ball a little bit. Yeah. Um, that sounds like it could be pretty potent. And if if they did that, I, I argued you know he needs to be in the sixties with completion. He doesn't even need to be in the seventies or anything. If he's in the, if he's a cage level in passing 62%, I need, I need a minimum 62. Although okay. like Anthony Richardson was like, what? 57%. I mean, that's just yeah. anything below. No, I'm not saying it's acceptable. I'm just saying, yeah, you know, to give a, a comparison, um, the low sixties, 62 is really the minimum. You know, you want to be above 65, anything above that's good. So 
We'll see. I, I hope the best for him, though. I hope he gets it. Kirk Campbell's a hell of a coach, though, man. I mean, I mean, look at JJ right now with uh, the whole pre-draft situation. You know, teams are falling in love with him. And I'll tell yeah. you right now, Kirk Campbell's a big reason for that. And uh, I don't know if you saw the article at the Wolverine, but, uh, you know, Kirk Campbell said he's looking at a Lions film and he's, he's like he's scouting a bunch of like uh, high power offenses. And, you know, I'm real interested to see, you know, what he creates this uh, next season. I think we will be a little more pass uh, pass aggressive. You know, we yeah. just, I, you know, I'll say I bet you we get a wide receiver in the portal, too. I'll, I'll call that. I, I think we'll get a quarterback, a wide receiver and a corner. Those are the three positions we'll, I think we're going to go after. Yeah, because I, I can see Tyler Morris, Samaj Morgan, and a portal receiver as the three. I can see that, right? Um, yeah. I, I would really like Carmelo English uh, to break out because the film, like the film I watched on him, he's a dynamic player. If they can get him working, um, then they could be the three, right? But if they can't, um, and you know, Bellamy's in my view been kind of spotty. Uh, although I do think he he did he did well getting Roman Wilson up another gear. Uh, you know, if I, somebody somebody got past the mediocrity that we've I think kind of been in wide receiver land, and you actually saw a wide receiver break out uh, this last year as much as a Michigan wide receiver has broken yeah. out in the last couple. Um, yeah. So. Maybe it can happen with uh, Carmelo English or another uh, of these kind of, you know, up and coming receivers. But I agree with you. I think there's going to be some portal shopping. Um, but he did make one comment. He said uh, that he likes the run because it opens up the pass right. uh, for the quarterback. So he mentioned that, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Um, cause somebody at, you know, he gets asked, you know, are you going to be still really run heavy? You're going to, I think, I think you're right. There's going to be a little, little more passing, but it, I don't think they're going to run away from the Michigan identity either because no. he likes no. the the concept of keeping them honest with the run so that they can open up the quarterback for the pass. Right. It'll be a power run game, you know, with, you know, kind of like with, uh, you know, I think Michigan wants to be what Detroit Lions are. I think that is the ideal offense, right? You have a power run game with a, a almost an almost air raid attack almost now we don't have the quarterback for that right nor do we have the wide receiver well i don't know samaj morgan i mean samaj could do it we're missing we're just missing a big body receiver really a fast big body receiver that's all we're missing offensively we have the tight end we have the rec we have the shifty receivers with samaj morgan and tyler morris so you know and then also donovan Edwards can catch out of the backfield right so it's actually yeah. it's there. The and we have a, we have a powerful offensive line. I know we have a lot of new starters, but I have a lot of faith in these players um, because they've been developed for three plus years, or they've been starters like Josh Preeby and uh, and Miles Hinton, right? So um, I just think uh, we're just a man. We're a quarterback away, dude. I just we're a quarter. I think in my opinion, we're a quarterback away from being dangerous in the playoffs. That's what I think. Yeah, I, I don't. I th I think you're right. I mean. Based on the personnel coming back, um, and and also just I think it's notable just how quickly Sharon Moore was able to rally um, after you know Harbaugh basically takes a decent chunk of the staff. Right, he was able to rally quickly, and, and I thought that was impressive. Yeah, and Harbaugh took forever doing it. Jesus, right? You know, like, <laughs> you really strung us along for a while, you know. So, you know, I, again, I think uh, Sharon has studied the ship. Now let's see what he does. Next step is, the, you know, what is the recruiting, uh, you know, momentum, right? What, what kind of momentum can he get? Who's the first to commit in the Sharon Moore era? That's what I'm looking forward to. You know, there's, I'll say this, the name to watch is uh, Alex Graham, uh, the safe the hmm. defensive back. Uh, okay. I think he's a top 100 player too. So, but he's got um, family ties. His mom was an alumni. So, uh, you know, he's the one to watch, I think, for the first commitment. All right. Well, we'll, we'll laser focus on that. Um, we do want to take a minute to thank Tom uh, for the $10 Super Chat and uh, Wolverine's Rock 2024-25. Uh, love that Super Chat. And we appreciate uh, Tom stopping by. And um, and he said something else that I think is is interesting. And I've, you know, I when we were doing our roster uh, look and we were looking at the receivers, um, you know, Channing Goodwin, 
who he's mentioning here. Um, you know, he's a player. I think we both said he probably is going to red shirt, yeah. but like, you know, if, if he has a really crazy camp, uh, you know, spring fall camp, I mean, he's a great, he's a, I think he's an exceptional wide receiver. Like if he could, if they can get him working in Michigan scheme, um, now, I still think he's going to sit a year, but uh, and and may may just get sprinkled in on a couple of those, you know, fourth quarter uh, wins against Indiana or who I don't even know if we're playing it, but you know, yeah, yeah. teams like that. Sorry, Jeffrey, if Jeffrey's watching, yeah. um, but you know that that you might see him there. But uh, I I mean, Tom, if he plays, that means he destroyed camp. He destroyed yeah. spring camp and he destroyed fall camp in order to make it up the depth chart. Yeah. I mean, that means he's a dude because I mean, there is depth a front in front of him. We're just missing a big body receiver. I mean, you know, and you know, I, I do think Channing Goodwin is uh that's who he's talking about. Uh, I yeah. do think uh, he's a very talented receiver. He kind of reminds me of a Josh Reynolds type, but uh you know, I, it's just hard for a freshman wide receiver to crack. I mean, what Samaj Morgan did this year, you know, I think a lot of people need to appreciate that. That's not easy. You know, he really had a role in the offense. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. I think, uh, you know, I think the the depth at the receiver room is good. We just are lacking a certain archetype of a wide receiver, which is the big body, stretch the field wide receiver. Yeah. It's true. Um, and you know, uh, yeah, some, some, some tall guys, you know, uh, I think there was a statement. We don't have anybody above six, six foot three or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very true. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, thank you, uh, for stopping by and coming into Michigan Wolverines live. I've been here with uh, TJ Konarski from, uh, Ronin sports talk. And, um, and we are going to encourage you as you come in, um, for these last couple minutes here, to hit the like button, 